Hello everyone, my name is Rahim Rezaiha. In this lecture, we're going to demonstrate how to do a safety simulation for outdoor flow. After this lecture, you will be able to create a simple geometry of, a, of an isolated building and the computational domain around it using ANSYS Design Modeler. Do the necessary de domain decompositions to prepare the uh, domain for a structured grid generation. Do the structured grid generation with local refinements near the building walls and also the ground walls. Prepare the settings to simulate the flow in ANSYS Fluent with, an, with a neutral atmospheric boundary layer. Uh, input to the software using a UDF and arrange everything within the ANSYS, work, ANSYS workbench. So we will start with an introduction to the problem and we will introduce the geometry that we are going to simulate and also the grid details that we want and then we will go through the step-by-step -step guide for the geometry creation, the grid generation and the simulation settings. So the first part, the introduction to the problem. So CFD is used for outdoor flow simulation for different purposes. We can use CFD to uh, predict the flow around buildings, to assess the pedestrian wind comfort, to analyze the pollutant dispersion in urban areas, and also for wind resource assessment for wind energy harvesting. For example, here on the image on the left, you see the flow around, the complex flow around the building, a high-rise building, and on the right you see the uh, velocity contours over an urban area which can be used to spot the uh, promising locations for wind energy harvesting. CFD can also be used for a coupled outdoor and indoor flow analysis. For example, in this, in this example, CFD is, is used to uh, analyze the impact of wind direction on indoor ventilation inside a large stadium. Okay, the geometry that we're going to uh, uh, simulate is a simple building, 10 by 10 meter width and length of the building, and 10 meter height of the building. So here we see the top view of the domain, and then we're going to create a, a computational domain around it. The size of the domain is based on the best practice guidelines for safety simulations of outdoor flow. That recommends five times the building height, edge, distance to the inlet of the domain, to the side of the domain, and to the uh, top of the domain, and 15 edge distance to the outlet of the domain. We're going to create a fully structured grid with minimum 14 cells along the building edges, also based on the recommendations in the literature, and we're going to have refinements near the building walls and also near the ground. So the first, we go to the second part, which is the details of the geometry creation. In this part of the tutorial lecture, we're going to uh, demonstrate step-by-step -step guide uh, to generate the geometry for an outdoor flow simulation. So in this case, it's flow around a, an isolated building. So we would use uh, ANSYS. Here is the ANSYS workbench environment. And then we will use the uh, ANSYS uh, analysis system, fluid flow. So you can double click on that. So we will have the module here. And then on the geometry, if you right click, then we will have uh, the space theme and design modeler to uh, create the geometry. Here we will use the design modeler tool. So I have already uh, opened the design modeler, so I will delete this module and just uh, maximize the window for the design modeler. So here we will see the environment of the design modeler. We are going to create the uh, sketch for the uh, for the whole domain uh, including the building in the middle uh, on the x5 plane so we select the x5 plane here we can see the x5 plane by clicking on the z axis the plus z here we can make the view normal and now we're going to create one sketch on the x5 plane so sketch one 
So we switch from the modeling panel to the sketching panel. And now we're going to create a rectangle for the base plane. So I select the rectangle. I come to the origin. When I see the letter P, it means that the starting point will be from the a point of the origin here. And then I drag the mouse and release it with an arbitrary dimension. Later on, we will set the dimension. So we have a rectangle. I move it in the middle. And then I switch to the dimensions panel. And then I set the width of the uh, rectangle as 110 meter. And the uh, length as 210 meter. So these dimensions, as already explained in the during the introduction are based on the best practice guidelines for the domain size for CFT simulations of outdoor flow around the building. So that is um, to ensure that the impact of the, 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 the domain boundaries and the results are minimized. So uh, we will continue. Now we have the base plane. So we come back to the modeling panel. So this is our base plane. Now we're going to create another sketch for the building itself. So we select again the XY plane and we select the new sketch. And now we have the sketch 2. Uh, and then we go again to the sketching panel. We select a rectangle and then we create a rectangle somewhere in the middle. So an a square shape. And then we again go to the dimensions to set the dimensions. So this, this is going to be the building. So we put 10 meter, and make it normal again. So uh, we select 10 meter for the width of the domain and 10 meter for the length of the domain. So in a square shape. And now we're going to set the distance uh, of the building to the of the building edges to the sides of the domain. So the building is going to be positioned 50 meters from the inlet of the domain. So we select a horizontal distance. We select the inlet of the domain. We select the uh, upstream edge of the building, and then we set 50. Meter. So that now the building is horizontally positioned correctly. Now we're going to also uh, position it with respect to the sides of the domain. So we select the vertical distance, the side of the domain, and the side edges edge of the building. And then here we also set as 50. Now the whole width of the domain was 110 meter. 10 meters is the building. We have 50 meter and 50 meter. So it's positioned in, uh, symmetric to the sides of the domain. So now we also have the sketch for the building. We go back to the sketching, to the modeling panel. So now we have two sketches. Now and this, the big rectangle is for the base ground and the small rectangle is, is going to be for the building. Now we need to make some uh, extra edges. These edges are going to help us to decompose this domain into several small parts, which will later help us to create the structured grid that we're going to do during this tutorial lecture. So I go back to the sketch one and go back to the sketching panel and select line this time. I go to the edge of the building. When I see the letter P written, I go up until when I see the letter C, it means that it will be intersecting with the uh, with this edge. And then when I, when I also have the letter V written in uh, just beside the line, it means that the line will be vertical. Then I release the mouse and then I will have this line. I repeat this process with 
also a second line. So also here. And so and so far four vertical edges are created. Now uh, we're going to also create four uh, horizontal edges. As already mentioned, we will use them later to decompose the domain. So one, two, three, and four. Okay, so in total eight edges are created. So now we go back to the modeling panel. So now we have the main sketches that we want. Now uh, it is time to create the uh, surfaces that we want. Okay, so now we select the sketch one. We go to the concept menu and we have surface from sketches. We select uh, as the base object sketch one, it's already selected. And then we change the operation to add frozen. Remember that we need the operation to be at frozen unless all the adjacent bodies. If you use the operation as add material, all the adjacent bodies will be combined, united. That, that's not what we want. We want separate bodies so that we can set the uh, edge sizing in the, during the grid generation separately. So we always use add frozen as the operation and then we click generate. Okay, now we see that here we have one part, one body, and that is the surface. That is the ground surface. Okay, now we do the same for the uh, for the small rectangle in the middle. To create also a surface, we go to surface from sketches, and then we select it. We confirm the sketch to selection and then we change the operation to add frozen and then we click on generate so now we have two parts to body we can see it in the panel okay now we also want now we have the base surfaces that we want now we also want to create some lines based on these lines that we did in the sketch one and then we'll use these lines to for the domain decomposition. We select again sketch one, we go to the create menu this time, we select lines from sketches. And then we, for the base object we have the sketch one and then for the operation we select add frozen and then we click on generate. Okay now we have a line body which we can see it here. So now we're going to use this line body and project it on the base ground here and then this will help us decompose the, the, uh, the base ground. Okay, so we select the line body, we go to the menu tools and then we have projection here. And then we select the projection, the type is already uh, selected, edges and body. And then we have to select the lines. So we have to select them one by one. So we, we want to use this eight lines for the projection. We confirm it. And for the target body, it's going to be the base ground. And then I click generate. Now we want to check what has happened. So I change the tool from the line selection to the face selection and then I click here. Okay, now I see that I have one, two, three, four, and five faces along this body. So these lines, the eight lines, were used to decompose this domain into five parts. So we still need to do more because we also need the separate part for the building here and also for the upstream and lateral side, downstream and lateral sides of the building. So we will uh, continue. 
Uh, this the further decomposition we will do it at the later stage now we want to go from the 2d surface that we have here this, this is the 2d surface now we're going to go from the 2d surface to 3d volumes and then we do the uh, extrusion we do this by the extrusion and then we do it one by one for each of the faces so I select this face I select extrude I confirm the geometry I change the operation to add frozen and then for the direction so it's normal to a plane so I select the XY plane confirm it and then for the depth, we want the domain to be with the height of 60 meters. So that is 10 meter the building height and 50 meter above the building height. So five times the height of the building. So I change this to 60 meter. You already can see the preview of the volume and then I click generate. So we have the first volume. I select the second phase, I repeat the same operation. So one phase, same plane, 60 meters is already there, and then I click on generate. The phase in the middle, extrude, add frozen, and then the volume and then 60 meter generate and also for this phase go extrude at frozen select the plane and then generate okay and now the last one here so I select this phase, I select extrude, change the operation to add frozen plane, XY plane, and then generate. So now we did for all the five parts of the uh, ground plane. Now we're going to separate the middle part for the building and for the building top. Later on, we will also uh, subtract the building volume from the domain okay now how should we do that we select the the face which is representing the volume just to make it easier we can hide this volumes so now I have hit, hit them hidden now I select this face So based on the, the surface area, we can also see that. So we have two faces overlapping here. So one is much larger and one is smaller. So this is 10 by 10 meter, which is the building. So this is now correctly selected. I select extrude. I confirm the geometry. I change it this time, the operation, not to add frozen to slice material. This means that this face will be extruded upwards and then in that direction it will slice the existing materials. So it will uh, actually work as a knife slicing the bodies. So I will select slice material and then the direction is the same as before the XY plane and then 60 meters. Okay, now if we show all the bodies, we see that some changes are happened. Already from the number of faces, we see that it, it suddenly increased to 13. Now if we look at the bodies, we, we can see that now this one, this the middle cross, is now separated into one, two, three, four, five, to five bodies. So we use this 
a small rectangle and we slice this uh, cross volume into five different volumes. So this was actually the knife that we used. So now this is what we wanted. So there's still one more step to do and this is we have to subtract the building itself from the domain because we want to simulate the flow around the building. So the building is not part of the domain. The building height is also 10 meter. So in order to do that, I again hide the volumes. Okay, the volumes are hidden there. Okay, now we can see the, we can select the face again. So it's the 100 meter, square meter, so it's the building. And then I go to extrude. This time at frozen, because I want to have a real volume. The direction is the same as before, no multi x y plane. But this time, remember to change the depth to 10 meter, because the building has a height of 10 meter. And then I click on generate. So now you see the volume of the building, but now we have to subtract it from the uh, from the volume, from the big volume, which is standing up there, it could be, yes, which from this volume. So we have to subtract the building from this volume, and then we will have a volume on top of the building, and the building will be hollow. So this is what we are actually looking for. So now we have to, we can do that using the Boolean operations. So I select the Boolean, and then I change the operation to subtract. So the target body is the big body and the tool body is the building. And then we don't want to preserve the building itself. We want to delete it. So we select this as no and then I select generate. Okay, now if we look at the bodies, so this is what we have here. So, and then the rest below that is hollow. So there's no volume there. And then we check the other volume. So this is the upper stream of the building. This is the lateral side, the downstream of the building, and then the rest of the volumes. And then this is the other lateral side, and then the other volume. So we have all the volumes that we wanted. So we have a 3D volumes. This is what we're going to send to the uh, measure. Now we don't need any more the surfaces. So we can select the surfaces and then we can right click and suppress them. So we don't need the surfaces anymore. We only need the volumes. So I show all the volumes. So this is now what we have. We have 13 parts and 13 bodies. Later on we'll come back to what the, what was the difference between them. So now we also don't need to see the sketches anymore. We can also hide them. So I select the two sketches and hide them to have better visual of the volumes. Okay, now uh, we have also done this step. So now at this point, uh, we select the volumes. You see that the vol we have an option to select between the fluid and solid because all the volumes that we have are fluid. So I change them to fluid. Let's see if we can do it as a group. Yes. So check all of them are now fluid. And then we do the same also for the remaining bodies. I change also all of them to fluid. Okay. Now we select all the solid, all the volumes that we have, which are now converted to fluid. And then we right click, and then we have here form new part. And if we do that, then we see that one part is generated here. So now. I can also select this and include them here. 
this was a this was a mistake in cleaning so I have to redo this operation so I select this part and then I click unsuppress all bodies you can also select unsuppress part but I do it so unsuppress part so now I have the parts back again now I want to also select this bodies and right click and then select from new part so now I have included them inside this part but although they are suppressed so what I wanted to show you is that now we have one part and 13 bodies here so each line each surface and each volume that you generate is one body but we can group them we can group different bodies as parts and then what why is that important because if you group bodies as parts then in the meshing software it will create conformal grid between these bodies and what does that mean it means that the grid nodes between these bodies which are inside one part will be connected to each other so you don't need to define any interface between them but if you don't include them the, within one part the grid nodes between them will not be connected so it's a non-conformal interface or non-conformal grid and then there you have to define an interface so that the software Fluent later knows that at this point it has to interpolate the values from these nodes to the adjacent nodes or from th those cells to the adjacent cells. But here we want connected grid, well, conformal grid. So that's why we include all of them inside one part. The suppressed bodies are not important but only their volumes. So now we have put them all inside uh, one. Uh, part and now there's also one more step that uh, is necessary to create this conformal grid is that we have to select all these uh, volumes and then com convert the shared topology method to automatic this step is also necessary to make sure that the grid points will be connected So I do it for all of them. Now we have two more to go. This one and the last one. Then we will check to see if we missed one of them. So this one is correct. This one is correct. This one is correct. This one is also correct. This one is also correct. This volume is also correct. Also this one, this one, and the last one. Okay, so we changed the shared topology for all of them to, to automatic. And then this ensures that the grid points will be conformal. And then these surfaces and lines line bodies are suppressed it means that they will not be uh, connected they will not be uh, transferred to the uh, meshing software okay so now the the geometry is almost ready so one thing that we still need to do is to separate the faces of the building from the uh, from the overall face that we have there so to clarify let me again hide this while hide this volumes I think this one and this one and this one I still can hide yes Okay, so this is the volume above the 
the volume above the building okay so we need what I mean by the faces surrounding the building are these faces this face this face now you see that we have one face which is which belongs to this volume and it goes from the bottom to the top but we know that the building is only 10 meter only from the bottom to here so we have to separate this face because we want to define it as a wall and now we cannot do it for this because this is a whole uh, face going from the bottom to the top of the domain so I need to show this body so that I can see it I select this face and then what I do is to project this line on top of this face then it will decompose into two parts so I want to project this line I select the projection tool edges on face is the type of projection this edge and then for the face I want to do it on this face and then I click generate now let's check now we have what we want so this is one face and then there's also one face on top so now the face is separated. You can make sure you can hide uh, the body on top of the building. Okay, now you can see that. We have one face here and one face here. So this is what we wanted. We have to repeat it for all the adjacent volumes to the building. So I show again the this volume. This volume, we don't need it anymore. We can hide it. Instead, I show this volume. So we do the same. I select this edge. I go to the tools, projection. And then I select this face and generate. Can we check? Correct, we have it here. So then I can also hide this body. And show this body I have to rotate it a bit yes like this I zoom and select this edge I go to the tools projection I select this see no not this face I have to rotate it on this face let's check the edges corrected correctly selected and then I select generate and then if I check yes this is what we want so we did it for three we also hide this one we also need to do it for the fourth one I have to find it yes it's this one So let's zoom a bit. Okay, now we see this face is from bottom to the top. Rotate it a bit. I select this edge. I go to tools, projection, and then for the target, select this face, and then I click on generate. And now I check. Yes. I have what I wanted, so we did four projections. This edge, this edge, you can see it, it becomes green. So this side, one edge, this side, one edge, this side, one edge, and the last one, this side, one edge. So we projected all these four edges and the adjacent faces, and then we could create the faces that we want for the building. Okay, so this was about the uh, separation of the faces for the building. So now we still need to do one more step. And that is projection of the height of the building. So that is 
the point at the height of the building, that is this point, on all the adjacent edges. Why do we do that? If we look at this edge, we see that it's in two parts. One edge, which is the building edge, and then one on top of that. This helps us to uh, adjust the refinement of the grid. For example, near the building top and bottom, we want to have finer cells. And also, for this edge, we want to have finer cells near the building top and then coursing towards the top of the domain. So this way, by having two edges, we can easily adjust it. But if we look at the side edges, like this one, it's one edge from bottom to the top. So we cannot do this uh, edge sizing setting later on in the grid generation phase. But now we have to do this decomposition here. So that's what we already understand. When we want to create a grid for the safety simulation, during the phase that you are generating the geometry, you should have it in mind that, okay, what kind of decompositions I need later on? How can I, especially if you want to do structured grid, you need to, you generally need to make several decompositions in the domain so that you can make adjustments in the grid resolution. So now we are uh, actually seeing that here, that we did several steps to create the geometry, but we did a few more to, decom to make the decompositions of the domain so that it helps us later on for the setting of the grid sizing. Okay, now we want to do this. So now let me show all the bodies. Now we can select one of these points, just for example, this point, which is the building height, and then project it on all the side edges. So, yes, this will split the edges uh, to two parts, as we already discussed. So, okay, so I've selected the uh, point. I go to the Tools menu, and, and then I select Projection. I confirm the point, And then I have to select the edges. Okay. So... I zoom out a bit, so I need to do it for all the surrounding edges. So we have one here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So we have twelve edges in total. Unfortunately, here we have to do it one by one. Of course, there are also other ways to make this splitting of the edges, but we do it this way in this tutorial. So I selected this edge. You see that you cannot select two at the same time. So I select this edge, and then I apply. I click Generate, and then I check. So now this edge is divided into two parts. OK. This was the projection that we did. Okay, now I'm going to repeat this for all the other 11 edges surrounding that. So I go and select this point. I go to Tools, Projection, and then I go to the second line. Apply, Generate, and Check. Yes. Okay, I select the point again. projection, and then the third edge. So generate and check. So yeah, one, two. So let me zoom in to make sure. 
this is correct. So for some reason this one we don't see it happening. Okay, it seems that we have two edges on top of each other here. This is one edge. Uh, we also have this edge. Okay. Okay, this is correct. So we have this edge and then we have this edge. Okay, now we go to the fourth one. We select the point, go to projection, and then I select this edge. So it's the fourth one. And then generate. And check. Yes, it's in two parts. Okay, now repeating that. So already four. So one, two, three, four, five. Yes. And then six. And then check again. Yes, I have it. Okay, six. So far we go to seven. And tools, rejection. So I click and generate and then I check. Yes. Go to eight. Yes, we have the small edge here. Go to nine, a few more. Yes, there we also have it. And then to ten. Generate, yes, and then to 11, projection, and then this edge, generate, yes, and then the last one, 12. So projection. Okay, okay, finally finished. So this one is also there. So we did all the projections. So now all the uh, edges on the side are also uh, correctly split. This edge on the top of the building, we also split it beforehand. So if we hide this part, we will see that this is also split. Okay, so let's rotate the domain a bit. Okay, the last part of the geometry creation is setting the uh, boundary conditions. So we start with setting the boundary conditions. Let's first put the domain into the uh, correct direction. So we have the building here, and then we have a smaller distance to the domain inlet, and then larger distance to the outlet, and then we have the sides of the domain. So then these three these three faces are the domain inlet. So we select the faces, we right click, name selection, and then we 
confirm the geometry selection, which was the three faces, and then we set the name as inlet. And then remember to click on generate. Now we go for the side uh, faces. So we have one, two, three here. And we have to rotate them in a bit. And I have one, two, three more there. So in total six, I right click, name selection, confirm six faces, and then I put symmetry. Because these walls are set later as symmetry. So then I confirm. So now I also have set the symmetry. Now we set also the, the outlet. So we have three faces on the opposing wall and select name selection and then uh, outlet click on uh, generate and then we also have set the outlet and then we also have the symmetry walls symmetry faces on the top so in total one two three four five six seven eight nine I select them and then I put also symmetry and top. So these are the top uh, boundaries. And then we have the ground. So I rotate the domain. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight faces for the ground and then we can select name selection and then we put ground and then I click on generate okay now we have to also select the building walls so bring back the domain to the original shape so this is actually the, the whole domain I rotate it to the bottom and then here we can select the building wall. So we have one, two, three, four, and five faces representing the building walls. So I select the wall. I select the faces and name them as building wall. Okay, now we have to select also all the volumes which we have there. So it's in total one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine volumes. And then I right click. I right click and then select name selection and then for this nine volumes or bodies I put I name them as fluid and then I click on generate so now the now the geometry is ready so we save the project okay so let's go to a folder For example, we put it uh, out, uh, outdoor flow, and then I put the name of the project also outdoor flow, and then save it. Okay, the geometry is now ready. We can close the Ansys Design Modeler. You see that we have the green tick here. The geometry is ready, and now we can go for the grid generation.